So welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today I want to talk about my cholerae plant. Look at that, it's so beautiful. And I'm standing here trying to balance. But apart from that, look at those lovely flowers that this plant has. And they look like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to propagate this plant. And then you can have plenty in your garden but it's such a beautiful plant. So my name is Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Now, this is one of my favorite, favorite plants, fellow gardeners. The Colorai, this particular one I have, and there are many, many different types of species. Now, the beautiful thing about this one, not only is it flowers all the time, look how many blooms I've got, but also it's the type of flower. So these tubular flowers, if you look inside, it's all speckled. And I tell you, is that sometimes I'm sitting in the garden and all these pollinators are going for this plant because for, from every single junction you do get your blooms. Another thing about this plant that really fascinates me is the leaves. It's all velvety and it looks like it has little hairs on it. At the back you get that lovely design that has all this, it looks like someone's just taken some red ink and just ran their hands through it and you get that amazing design. And another thing is the stem again, it's very hairy. So, you know, it just is something so special. And do check other types of coloreas that they do have in the market because they have so many different other variations with so many different other colors. Now, when we get down to what sort of light requirement does it need? What I find is that if you do put it in a bright indirect sun, it actually does really well. Sometimes full sun, which I do have some in the back, but just getting the morning sun, it does really scorch their leaves. However, is that for as long as it's getting, a min, uh, let's say, a morning sun and not getting that harsh afternoon sun, they should do well. What about the water requirement? Water requirement is basically it loves to have a moist soil and especially during its growing season. As it's growing, make sure that the plant just gets that extra boost with a sort of moist, evenly moist soil. But later, as it does develop, it does become drought resistant. So now the other thing about the plant is that as I was trying to really figure out how do you propagate this plant, because I've never done a propagation on it, I realized that this plant does have rhizomes, and we've talked about rhizomes before. Now, a rhizome is actually an extension of the stem that actually is under the soil. Now, what happens is, in case of watering, what happens is, if you do overwater, you will kill the rhizome because rhizomes don't like water around their feet. So do be really careful with overwatering and basically your plant will survive. What happens with the cholera is that basically is that as the days get shorter in Europe, the plant will start going into dormancy and also in situations where it's exceptionally dry, the plant just goes into dormancy, which means it slows down its growth and it just sits there. But I can understand that if it's too hot in, an, in a way is that you, it's trying to conserve itself, but otherwise it's good to go. Now let's look at the propagation. I'm looking at one particular propagation that is working for me because I've just learned maybe in the last few months how to propagate this plant, but this propagation is actually good. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually just put this in water so we can remember our plant and so and look at those beautiful flowers as we propagate. So now with propagation is basically as I was inquiring and doing my research, I actually did a water propagation and as I said is just to look and see where these rhizomes are because I couldn't find my rhizomes. So having this one in water, this was in a water propagation, I discovered that here is 
your horizon. It actually looks very scaly and it actually does look like a little caterpillar. But basically, the rhizome is there on the stem. Now, what happens is with rhizomes and how you get these jutting out is that they develop on every single node under the soil. So you get a rhizome here. And that's a good sign because once you do have a rhizome, you're going to get your pup. Now, I must show you this other one again is I did a water propagation to understand and I saw that the rhizome is actually growing leaves and that tells me that basically from the rhizome as it emerges from the soil it will go into full plant um, formation so it is actually very interesting. So I'm going to put that one down and then uh, all these goodies. So here is a propagation done here is a rhizome that has actually risen from the ground and is producing its own leaf. Now this one can actually be propagated because it will take off. Now that we understand that your rhizome is coming out of nodes that are underneath the soil and we have seen that they do jut out and they do actually emerge with the leaves forming is, I've got some more goodies here, <laughs> is, yeah, so here we have all these lovely rhizomes having all these uh, babies shooting out, pups, and um, what else do I have here? And so this is what the original rhizome looks like. So now, understanding that, this is where my next stage came in. I went and had a look at my plant, and I'm going to dismantle this one. I went and got my plant, put it in water, got my rhizom happening, and then I just put it in the soil. And then suddenly I noticed my babies are coming up, so I was so excited, so I want to share this with you. <laughs> I'm going to really uproot it because, I, you know, after the babies came up, I was so excited and I thought, oh gosh, I've mastered a, a propagation, I've learned how to, to propagate this. So I'm going to actually see if I can just remove it um, like that with the plant. <gasps> oh my God, look at that rooting. So, I'm going to just place it here. I didn't know what was happening under the soil. So with these babies, rhizomes, look at that. This is how it happens. So as we break it up to try to understand the plant, we suddenly realize that so much is happening under the ground. Look at that. So my little water propagation, hence later, soil, has actually produced its own rooting. And look at the rooting here. It's all these rhizons, the furry, <laughs> the furry looking rhizons. So now that we've seen what happens underneath, I am actually very confident to do a propagation just using the rhizome. So what I'm going to do, I have this here, which is moist soil. And all I'm going to do is take these rhizomes and just line them. And then what we'll do is we will cover it and we'll stick this one here and these ones whatever they are here maybe this way and with this one I'm going to lie it like that and then take this one with its rising maybe put it in the corner like this
And then what I'm going to do is take the soil and lightly uh, cover it. In that way, my rhizomes can actually, my new babies can actually free, be free to, to travel <laughs> horizontally and also produce their lovely little pups and I'm really happy. So I'll completely cover the rhizomes just like that. So what we have here is we have, a, we have the rhizomes that we're using for propagation purposes. We've seen that with the rhizome, which are these underground, under soil stems, out of the nodes, these pups do appear and we've seen it here. So what we've done here is added soil on top of the rhizomes and hopefully all the babies will shoot out and which will give me and multiply my stock. So that is one. And what we've seen here, where I followed the same example, I put my plant into water and got, um, got it propagating like root production and all that. And then I noticed these rhizomes. And in order to actually see what those rhizomes do, I did put the whole thing in soil and suddenly I realized it's worked. I have my little pups here and I'm so happy. <laughs> so thank you so much fellow gardeners. Sometimes it's good to experiment, especially in a situation that you get sort of, I don't know how to do this. Do have a look at the, the rooting because the rooting always tells a story about the plant. And once you're inquisitive enough, you'll find a way of propagating your plant by just looking at the rooting. So thank you so much. Do like, share and press that notification button and do subscribe to our channel. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. I'm, and do leave your comments on my um, YouTube channel and also on Instagram. And if you do have a problem, do contact me. I'm always there available. I do love receiving your comments and thank you so much for the support that you've given us all these years and we're very, very happy and um, see you next time. Happy gardening.